Hi, just before we start the video, I just want to remind you that my latest images, which you can see on Instagram at any time, Matto and Photography, are available for purchase from my website. Let's jump into the video. Hi there, how are you going? Now today I want to talk about prime real estate. This here is my 3Z prime lenses that I would take with me perhaps on say a portrait shoot, a city walk around shoot, or maybe even traveling overseas, traveling particularly light. Now if you look at these three lenses, it's kind of hard to tell from the back which is which. Is this the MC105 or is this the 50mm 1.2? Can you tell? This one, you might be able to tell. It's a bit unique. This one here, is it the 35mm 1.8 or is it the 50mm 1.8? Those two lenses are very, very similar in size and shape. Please let me know in the comments below right now, which is which? Have you done that? Okay, you're back. We're gonna start here in the middle. This is the 20 millimeter 1.8. What a cracker of a lens. Now, of course, a little bit wider than say a 24. Now, it's personal preference as to whether you might go the 24 1.8 or the 20 1.8. For me, it was the fact that I already had the 24 in the lens that came with my Z7. I had the 24 to 70. So it was like, oh, I wanna try something different. I've never owned a 20 mil prime. I have owned the F mount 24 1.4. So I thought I'd give it a go. And I'm super happy that I've got that extra bit of width. This is great for architectural as it's a prime. It's pretty well handling distortion. And like all of the Z lenses, Chromatic aberration, purple fringing, flaring, ghosting, all those sorts of things are pretty well suppressed across the entire range. Doesn't matter which one you get, they do it and they do it pretty damn well. So that's my first lens. Great traveling overseas or great if you're trapped in a little laneway and you want to get an ultra wide shot, awesome. Also, if you're like me and you want to do a little bit of vlogging on the side, 20 mil nice and wide perfect for that sort of thing okay next is this the 35 or is it the 50 perhaps this one might give it away a little bit yes you're right it's the 50. now this was the first lens that i purchased beyond the lens that came with my z7 the 24 to 70 f4 i got this lens I walked away from the store, I unboxed it, I put it on my Z7, I started shooting it straight away. This video up here, you can basically see my real-time reaction to how this blew me away. Now this is a lens that punches way above its weight and it can rub shoulders with lenses that are two, three and even four times the price. This is the absolute epitome of a nifty 50 this lens is spectacular. And really, if you like this focal length, this is a must. I think it's the most affordable Z Prime lens. Super useful, super sharp, super well controlled. Congratulations for making such a great all-rounder lens. Now, is this the 105 or is it the 50mm 1.2? Lock your votes in right now. Here we go. Yes, indeed, you picked it. We're not gonna have two 50s, are we? This is the 105. Now, as you can see in this video that I made here, the 105, even so it's a macro micro lens, it is so much more than a lens for just close up photography. Now this lens can be used obviously for portraiture and it does a cracking job of doing things for portraiture, but it also can be used for city and landscape photography as I've shown in multiple videos. Check them out if you want to just see how this is just an astonishing lens. And you can also see in this video here, that I've also compared this lens to the 85mm 1.8S and the 70 to 200 2.8 VRS, the Z mount version of course. And this lens by a whisker comes out on top. From my opinion, just having a good hard look, 
optically, it's just so good. This thing renders like crazy. Even on a Z7, you're punching up towards 50 megapixels. It's still astonishing. I can imagine that this lens is designed for whatever, say, the Z8 might be, if and when. I'm sure there's a Z8 in the works. Someone asked me recently, what, what do I think is going to be in the Z8? Well, if the Z9's up near 50 megapixels, I don't think the Z8 can be 50 megapixels. I think it's got to be 60 or beyond. Personally, I don't need or want that, but I think that's what the market expects at this point in time. So I, I, I certainly think this lens is just going to be a cracker, even on ultra high megapixel cameras. Although I do believe all the Z lenses are designed to handle that sort of world. This lens, it's a cracker. One of the things that I love most about this lens, unlike these two, is that it has VR. So the VR works in concert with the in-body image stabilization to give you just ultra smooth handling. Now, of course, this is super useful if you're doing macro and you're close up because micro movements can be a pain and this thing will smooth them out. But really, to be honest with you, it's super useful if you're, say, doing a, a city landscape or, or nightscape photography and you want to do it handheld. You can get down to some really slow shutter speeds, as we can see here from these examples. Not only that, it means it's also a great video lens. We get ultra sharp images, yet we can still use this thing handheld. Fantastic for stills awesome for video. This is just an amazing all-rounder. I just don't think you can go wrong at the price point. And what I love about these three particular lenses is they're reasonably compact, they're reasonably well priced, and they're quite light between them. So this makes quite a good travel kit if you're happy to be swapping lenses. Of course, zooms have been invented and you could get something like the 24 to 200, which would cover all of this, but it's not gonna cover all of this with the same optical brilliance. So you just make a choice whether F stops or pushing the optical envelope is important to you or just having one lens on the front of your camera all the time. The ball is in your court on that one. But let me tell you why I love these lenses if say you're shooting with a Z7 or a Z7 II or the soon to be announced Z9, which we know shoots at 8K, so we know it's got to be somewhere between 40 or 50 megapixels. And that is that all of these lenses, obviously in full frame, 20 mil, 50 mil, 105. But in APS-C, 30 mil, 75 and almost 160 millimeters. So just from these three lenses, you have quite a broad range of focal lengths. Now, of course, that takes into account that you're okay to crop to APS-C or DX as we call it in the Nikon world. FX for full frame, DX for APS-C. Now, on a Z7 or a Z7 II, that is almost 20 megapixels when cropped. So that is still a pretty compelling number. When, of course, you have cameras like the Sony a7 III or the Nikon Z6 and Z6 II, which are 24 and millions of people are happy with 24. And there's not much difference between 20 and 24 megapixels. So keeping that in mind, three optically brilliant lenses that can also be used in video. The thing about video is the Z6, the Z6 II, the Z7 and the Z7 II, there is no penalty for jumping to 4K or 1080p in crop mode, in APS-C mode, you still get all of your functionality. So again, you have lenses ranging from 20 mil all the way up to almost 160 mil, and you can still shoot in 4K. I, I think this just continues to show us what a versatile system the Nikon Z system is. These lenses, they deliver optically. We know that the 105 is an absolute stunner and blows my mind, and the 50 here did the same thing. And the 20 mil, well, I have less experience with the 20 mil and I've never owned another 20 mil, but I have not been disappointed in any way, shape or form. These are all three lenses that will serve you super well. So please tell me what three prime lenses, Z prime lenses, would you like in your kit? And 
What three lenses? Choose any lens, a fantasy lens, a fantasy trio that you would take with you anywhere in the world to shoot all of your different needs. I'd love you to share that in the comments below. Well, it has been absolutely spectacular to see you. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe. Please like and share, and of course, liking helps the channel so much, so if you can give us a little like, that just means a lot to the video, then it gets out to a wider audience. And please, if you'd like to have your name in the 2022 calendar, you need to order before July 23rd. Not too far off now. All right. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.